Hi, my name is Dave, and in this video we'll walk through an example of a foreign currency translation. In this example, Dinkum Limited is an Australian company which was incorporated on the 1st of July and is a subsidiary of Union Jack Limited, which is a UK group. Dinkum has a 30 junior end, and we've got a number of exchange rates, which are going to be useful as we move through the example. We've got an exchange rate for the start of the year of one Aussie equal to 47 pence. On the 15th of May, the Aussie has strengthened to 52 pence and then weakened again to 48 pence by the 30th of June. The average rate for the year is one Australian dollar equaling 50 pence. In a foreign currency translation, the aim is to translate the statements of an entity from one currency, in this case, the functional currency of Dinkum, which is Australian dollars, to another, in this case, the presentation currency of Union Jack, which is Great British Pounds. So to do that, we need some financial statements, which is what we have here. They're not overly complicated, but I do want to point out a couple of things. First, the sales revenue has two components. Of the $10,630 in sales, $6,000 occurred evenly over the year, whilst $4,630 occurred in one transaction on May 15. Second is that the foreign exchange loss was determined on the 30th of June. Both of these will be important later on. So how do we translate these Aussie denominated statements into pounds? To do that, we turn to paragraph 21 of IAS 21. The results and financial position of an entity whose functional currency is not the currency of a hyperinflationary economy shall be translated into a different presentation currency using the following procedures. And these procedures all turn on the accounting element involved. Part A discusses assets and liabilities and how they shall be translated at the closing rate at the date of that statement of financial position. At this point, a few definitions are useful. First, functional currency. The functional currency is the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. The functional currency of Dinkum is the Aussie, but it's not always straightforward to determine this. However, we're not looking at how we deal with that here. The presentation currency is the currency, not unsurprisingly, in which the financial statements are presented. Union Jack uses the pound in this example. And finally, the closing rate is a spot exchange rate at the end of the reporting period. It makes sense to be using the closing rate for assets and liabilities because the statement of financial position is a snapshot of the entity as at the end of the reporting period. So you might as well use the exchange rate on that particular date. Turning to income and expenses, these get translated at the exchange rates at the date of the transactions, which again makes sense because it would seem strange to use the exchange rate for say the 15th of January when the transaction took place on the 25th of September. However, it's important to note that paragraph 40 allows entities to use average rates for the purposes of practicality. What this means for our example here is if the date of the transaction can be ascertained for an income or expense item, then use the exchange rate on that particular date. Otherwise, use a reasonable average rate. Lastly, all resulting exchange differences shall be recognized in other comprehensive income. This will make more sense with some numbers behind us, so let's get into it. We're starting with a statement of profit or loss, and for ease of explanation, I've split out the two revenue items. It's then simply a matter of identifying which rate to use for the translation. As we're dealing with income and expense items, we're looking for either the rate on the date or an average rate. For revenue over the year, we use the average rate. For the one-off transaction on the 15th of May, we use the rate on the 15th of May, which is 0.52. Without other information, you can assume things like cost of sales happen evenly over the course of the year, so the average rate is used again. It's important to note that for any subtotals, and gross profit is the first that we've seen, you don't translate this line. You just use the same addition or subtraction that you used in the functional currency. 
If you're using a spreadsheet, it's just simply a matter of copying the cell formula across. So 3,000 plus 2,408 minus 2,000 gives a gross profit of 3,408 pounds. The foreign exchange loss was determined on the 30th of June, so we have a date for the expense item, and so you use the exchange rate for the 30th of June. Net profit is a subtotal, and based on the lines above, we end up with a £3,328 net profit for the year. This number is important for later on, so it's handy to make a note of it. Right, now that we've dealt with the statement of profit or loss, it's time to turn to the statement of financial position. Assets used to closing rate. Liabilities do as well, but we don't have any here. Again, total assets is a subtotal, so no rate is required, just add up the lines above. There is an explicit guidance for the two equity line items, but the common process is to use a spot rate for when the share capital was originally recognized. Using the rate on the date of incorporation, the 1st of July, X4, we get share capital totaling 1,880 pounds. Retained earnings isn't translated, but brought in from our earlier work on the statement of profit or loss. If we add up share capital and retained earnings, we end up with £5,208. But this doesn't equal the translated net assets of 5023 And if there's anything accountants hate, it's a balance sheet which doesn't balance. But there is a way out of this, and that's the Foreign Currency Translation Reserve. The FCTR is a balancing item which is calculated as the amount required to get the translated balance sheet to balance. In this case, it's negative 185 pounds. Any movement in this account will be disclosed in other comprehensive income. And that covers accounting for a foreign currency translation.